We are getting you start for the beginning of training camp, and we're breaking down position by position. Lance Middle, Paul Dottino with you. Let's focus on the tight ends, Paul. And this is an extremely intriguing positional group because of the productivity that this group can bring to the forefront based on how Jason Garrett has utilized tight ends going back to his Dallas days. And clearly it starts with Evan Ingram, but there's so much depth and so many other components beyond Evan when it comes to this group. No, you're absolutely right about that, Lance. But I think the bigger thing for me is that each one of these guys has a different skill set. I think that we all agree that Evan Ingram is the most athletic of the bunch. Uh, he can make the most spectacular plays. He can be the most dangerous in terms of statistics. But I do believe that each of the other fellas, whether it's Smith, whether it's Toilolo, Tomlinson, we'll talk about the rest of those guys. They each bring something very important to the table. And depending upon the matchups and the kinds of things that the Giants run, I could see each of these guys getting at least some valuable repetitions. Well, let's start with Evan Ingram because he certainly tops the depth chart and it's based on his productivity in previous years. But Paul, when you talk about Ingram, you can't avoid the discussion over the injury bug. I think what was unfortunate last season, his first five games, Paul, he was on set for a career year. When you look at what he brought to the table and then unfortunately wound up just playing eight games. But if he stays healthy, I think last season was more than just a flash of what he's capable of doing. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about it, Lance. Uh, if he's healthy for the full 16 games, which he hasn't been able to do so far, the Giants would be just thrilled because he will put up very significant numbers. I think, to be honest, they do want to get the ball to the receivers. They do want to play a whole lot with Saquon Barkley out of the backfield as well. But I think we're looking at what Ingram put up as a rookie when he nearly played the full season putting up maybe 60 plus catches for well over 700 yards and maybe even catching a half a dozen touchdown passes. I think we're looking at what he did then. You know, now he's going into his fourth year. I think his rookie season numbers are probably more appropriate as to what the Giants will expect. Basically, by looking at how Garrett used Witten, I think that's what we're going to see from Ingram. Well, and speaking of Jason Garrett, the one thing that I think is notable, Paul, is the fact that the Cowboys also utilize multiple tight ends. Blake Jarwin emerged for them over the last few seasons. And that brings me to Caden Smith, because when Evan Ingram got hurt last season, it was Caden Smith that filled in admirably. They go down as the steal of the Giants in 2019 because he joined the team in September after he parted ways with the Niners. And if you're talking about a two-way player, Paul, he certainly is the first name that comes to mind. Lance, I love when people talk about a rookie class or a draft class and they ignore the guys who are either undrafted, signed rookie free agents, or they ignore guys who were picked up along the rookie season from other teams waiver wire or practice squad. I know technically they're not draft picks. I understand that. But they're still part of what is considered the rookie class. And Caden Smith was a very productive player for the Giants. I do think he is an all-around player. Not as explosive, obviously, as Evan Ingram. But 31 catches last year, and I believe unofficially only one drop. So, in my opinion, he is a very reliable option, and I think the Giants are very glad to have him because, again, Jason Garrett's the kind of guy who will like to use a lot of double tight end sets. Well, and that's what I think is intriguing about this position group, Paul, because if we're talking about Caden Smith, it's not just about him catching the ball, even though he showed very good chemistry with Daniel Jones, it's also his blocking. I mean, we saw him really set the tone at the line of scrimmage. So I'm in agreement with you, Paul. We could very well see a lot of Evan Ingram and Caden Smith on the field at the same time, with Ingram serving as the receiving tight end and Caden Smith maybe being that extra offensive lineman. There are so many options that they can utilize with both of those guys on the field. So many people continue to say, well, maybe Ingram should be playing more wide receiver. Well, to be frank with you, they can play a double tight end set and Ingram can go out in a pass route. So, so what's the difference whether or not he's lining up along the line, which gives you more deceptive capabilities, or if you want to line him up outside, all right, fine. Do it a few times to give people a different look. The bottom line is the Giants are so much better off right now with this two tight end combination than they have been in a lot of years, probably going back to the days of Jeremy Shockey and Dan Campbell. 
And that has been the heart and soul at times for the Giants, this position. And related to what we're just talking about, Paul, let's move a little bit on the depth chart. When it comes to blocking, it doesn't hurt to have a 6-8 addition in the mix. And that brings me to Levine Toilolo. I think what's fascinating about his track record, there was a game when he was with the Atlanta Falcons, Paul. The Falcons lost their starting right tackle. And who did they slide in? They slide in Toy Lolo. So this is a player that could very well be that extra offensive lineman because he only had two receptions for the Niners last season. Well, let's not forget, not only is he 6'8", Lance, but he goes at about 270 pounds, okay, which is why they made him a pseudo tackle for one game in Atlanta, because he not only has the height, he also has the thickness and the size and the frame to be able to really manhandle people at the line of scrimmage. Now, from what I understand, there was there was an awful lot of surprised people when, when he got signed by the Giants during free agency because he is primarily a blocking tight end. And you know, in today's video game NFL, most people don't put a high premium on very good blocking tight ends. They all want the guys who can catch the ball and put up stats and highlights and video game numbers. Well, here is a very good blocking tight end. And because the Giants, with Jason Garrett and Joe Judge, and obviously Dave Gettleman, who put a premium on blocking tight ends and getting a ground attack that can pound people, they're like, wait a minute, this guy is a golden nugget to us. He's got a lot of luster on him, and they plucked him out of free agency. And I do think you could even see some triple tight end sets with him in there when the Giants just try to punch people uh, in the face and move it downfield. Well, because he's somebody that, to your point, has assumed that complimentary role over the course of his career. And lastly, Eric Tomlinson, Garrett Dickerson, two familiar names because they were on the Giants last season. Tomlinson was with the team for a few weeks. He's back in the mix. And Dickerson has been a staple of both the practice squad and the active roster over the last few seasons. Yes, that's true. Dickerson, obviously very familiar with the uh, Pat Shermer coaching staff. I don't know exactly where he stands now that the Giants have new coaches coming in. Tomlinson, we know about his cup of coffee with the Giants last year. But here's the thing. At 6'6", 262, he's bigger and bulkier than Dickerson. And I think, really, people consider him an accomplished, blocking NFL tight end. So it's going to depend, really, on what skill set the Giants want because these two guys are a little bit different in what they bring to the table. Well, as we mentioned, the number of intriguing options at the tight end position, it could be a key component in Jason Garrett's offense. Paul, enjoyed the conversation. Look forward to training camp. Good to see you, Lance. That is a breakdown of the Giants' tight ends entering 2020.